So friends, many of you have been to Graceland. This is on the right-hand side. By the way, this area was already out here and started being set up before he ever bought Graceland. And then he developed it into what it is today. This is an aerial of Graceland before he purchased it. And you can even see the circular place there where the wall became. And that was long before he ever owned this and turned it into what he called the meditation gardens. Now, this is not something that he just decided on his own to call the meditation gardens. He based that off of something that he saw out in Los Angeles, specifically Pacific Palisades. In a moment, we are going to take you to the place where the meditation gardens was named from that Elvis would actually go to and spend time. Yep, he would come out here to be at one with God, to think about his life and think about things that were going on. And it was all based off of this place, the Self-Realization Fellowship Lake Shrine. And you see it says, Welcome to These Meditation Gardens. So here it is, friends, the Lake Shrine. This is the entrance to Self-Realization Fellowship. I'm going to get up on this wall. Sadly, we arrived here and it was already closed. We went back three years later and were able to get in, which you will see in this video. We go back a couple of years later and get inside and we will go inside soon. This is literally up the street from the Pacific Ocean. At the end of this video, I'm going to fly the glory and you'll even see the Pacific Ocean. That building that you see right there, which is the windmill, Elvis would go in there and meditate. I heard stories about that. That's also where George Harrison's funeral was at. Yep, that same building right there. This is something that's inside there. Mahatma Gandhi's ashes are inside that white thing that you see there and was put there in 1950. And that stone sarcophagus that part of his ashes are in is over a thousand years old. So this building right here that I'm calling the windmill is where Elvis would go and meditate or worship inside this chapel. And Dick Grobe told me that him and Sam Thompson would stand outside in this little area right here while Elvis was inside. I did not film inside of there because there was people in there and I didn't want to uh, invade their privacy, if you will, for what they were doing inside of there. But this is also where George Harrison's funeral was. I can imagine just sitting here, relaxing, meditating, thinking about the Lord. So now let's talk about how this place ended up here. How did the Self-Realization Lake come to be? This was originally a ranch called Bison Ranch. There was a guy that became a movie mogul, if you will, that was an early creator of silent films. His name was Thomas Ince, I-N-C-E. Ince actually started making movies in New York, but the Thomas Edison Company was trying to create a monopoly on movie making, so Ince moved to the other end of the United States, creating the very first movie studio built by a movie mogul. He bought the land that Bison Ranch was on, and originally they called it Entsville. Later, it was renamed Triangle Ranch. Tons of movies were made right here in this spot, and you can see the Pacific Ocean on the right. That happened in 1912. Entz is actually known as the father of the Western and also the father of or the creator of the Hollywood studio system. He's the first person to do movie production in an assembly line system of filmmaking. And that all happened right here in Entzville in Palisades Highland or Pacific Palisades. Where the self-realization lake is, is where some of the very first movie 
sets and studios were. Eventually, he was one of the founders of Paramount Pictures, Paramount Studios. In 1915, Henry Culver convinced Entz to move to Culver City and build his studios there, and he built this building that looks like George Washington's house. Trey and I actually filmed here, and I'm going to let Trey tell you a story about Gone with the Wind at this house. Stay tuned. So this was Washington's house, right? This was modeled after Mount, after Mount Vernon. Yeah. But this is original, of course. This is original. This is a movie studio. This gate right here was used in Gone with the Wind, right? Right. So tell us in what way. All right, so when um, when the characters, when the maid, what was her name? Aunt. Uh, I don't remember. But when Charlotte, um, Scarlett O'Hara is made uh, and this, uh, the other slaves come back. I don't know nothing about birthing no baby, I know that. When they come back to Terra after, I guess, all the burning and everything, they go through this gate. It was actually filmed right here. And what they did was they cut out off the top of the actor's head, you know, up above their head, and they used a painting of Terra in the background, and they superimposed it in... in um, so like they were walking to Terra. They were walking to So this to Terra. was the gate to Terra. And this driveway was in it. So that driveway was the gate. And they, that's the old school Photoshop or or a way that they would cut out something in the background. Right. That's the way they did it. So this gate and this sidewalk is actually in Gone with the Wind. Amazing. And Very cool. This is Culver Studios now. And it used to be Desi Lou. Desi Lou Studios would be up there. They had a um, water tower here with Desi Lou and Lou Silva and Desi Ernest. you can Ernest see in it. the back of some photos. And it was Selznick Pictures during Gone with the Wind the wind era he had his name up on the top so everybody had their names on there that owned the studios very cool this is it and this is at the corner of washington and ents culver city and you just heard friends that they even named the street after ents yep right there that was his new studio Sadly, Entz died at age 44 on William Randolph Hearst's, Patty Hearst's father's ship under mysterious circumstances that they called a heart attack. Some think that that's not really what happened. But that is a story for another day, so let's get back to the lake. So after Entz left in 1915, it went through a series of different hands of directors and movie studios and fires. And in 1922, the last fire basically destroyed everything except for a church that was made out of stone. After that, it was actually used as a rock quarry and different things like that for a period of time until a real estate developer actually started excavating and doing things with the stone that created this lake. The 2.5 acre lake was named Lake Santa Ynez and is the only natural spring-fed lake in the city of Los Angeles. So this is where the story gets even more interesting. In 1940, a man named H. Everett Big Mac McElroy, he was the assistant superintendent of construction at 20th Century Studios. Him and his wife purchased this land with the idea that it again could be used as a film set. The problem was this was right at the point of the war and building materials were really hard to come by. So they moved their houseboat from Lake Mead just outside of Las Vegas, to this lake. That's why there's a houseboat on the lake, and they lived in it. Then they built a small house that had a wheelhouse, and that's where they lived, which was across the lake. And that house today serves as the gift shop area and that kind of stuff at the Self-Realization Lake. I think this is the structure from the other side. I'm not 100% sure. And for the McElroy's last project, him and his wife, they built a 16th century replica of a Dutch windmill. That windmill is actually functional, though they've never used it. And that is the place where George Harrison's funeral was, as I mentioned. And Elvis would go here to pray and meditate. That's been around since the 1940s. It's pretty amazing all the things that are still there from the McElroys. In 1948, McElroy and his wife sold the property to Renee Williams and Joseph M. Gross, an oil company executive, who reportedly paid over $250,000. Gross and his wife moved into the windmill and made plans to redevelop the site into a resort that included a 150-room hotel to be constructed around the contour of Lake Santa Ynez. However, one evening, Mr. Gross reportedly had a dream reoccur three times, where in the middle of the lake there was a platform 
adorned with the podium. Here, ministers from the churches of all religions addressed thousands of attendees with inspirational speeches. When Mr. Gross awoke, he looked up the name Church of All Religions in the telephone directory and found the listing for the Self-Realization Fellowship Church of All Religions located in Hollywood. Inspired by this extraordinary coincidence, he immediately composed a letter to go out the next day's mail, which described this dream and included an offer to sell his property. Rather than await a response on the following day, Mr. Gross telephoned the church headquarters and was transferred to, and I'm going to have a little trouble saying this, Paramahansa Yogananda, who mysteriously initiated the conversation before the caller even introduced himself or stated his business. You have some property for sale, don't you? When can I see it? Inquired Sri Yogananda. But you haven't received my letter, replied Mr. Gross. The letter will come tomorrow morning. Can we meet tomorrow afternoon, responded Sri Yaganalanda. The next day, he visited the site and immediately planned for the establishment of an open-air shrine of all religions. With the support of benefactors, Paramahansa Yogananda acquired the property in 1949 and constructed a temple, meditation garden, and the Mahatma Gandhi Peace Memorial. And according to Jerry Schilling, Elvis walked around the lake, picked up some brochures, later sent away for some information about Eastern philosophy, and he developed a 12-year relationship with Sri Dayamata, the woman who was then the president of the Self-Realization Fellowship. He would often call her for advice when he had trouble. And since Paramahansa Yogananda is called the father of yoga in the West, perhaps when Elvis sang yoga is as yoga does, there was more to it than we thought. Now I'm going to fire the glory over it so you can see what it looks like from a bird's eye view.
So friends, I hope that you enjoyed learning the early ties to the beginning of Hollywood movie making to this place, and also the ties to famous people like Elvis, his meditation garden, and George Harrison. If you get a chance to go, I highly recommend it. During my research, I found that these places are all over the world, including one in Nashville where I live. I had no idea. And I would like to thank my friend Vin Bianchi for getting me inside the meditation gardens and inviting me. Thank you so much, Vin. You rock, my friend. And if you're new to this channel, Adventures of the Spy Guy, I have more than 600 Elvis videos. And don't forget to check out my sidekick, Globetrotting with Trey. He has over 150. And we both focus on true Elvis stories and what really happened. So if you want to support this effort, make sure that you subscribe, like, and then join. That helps us to get more videos out there. Yes, it does.